Introduction Definition of Halloween If we had to briefly define what Halloween is, we could say that it is a holiday celebrated on October 31st that combines elements of Celtic sowing, where the closing of the harvest season and All Saints Day were commemorated. Christians celebrate it in honor of the deceased who, having passed purgatory, enjoy eternal life with God. The Origin of Halloween Place of Origin and Etymology The Celtic roots of the festival Samhain, pronounced in Irish Sowin, was a festival celebrated by the people of Gaelic origin composed of the territories of present-day Scotland, Ireland and the Isle of Man from the first century. The word could come from the words sun, summer, and fuin, end, which would mean end of summer, although this could be a popular etymology or replacement of an unknown form by a more familiar one. In 1907, Whitley Stokes, a Celtic scholar and lawyer, suggested an etymology of Proto-Celtic Samani, meaning assembly. As a curiosity, cultures inheriting part of the Celtic tradition still celebrate vestiges of this sowing, as in the case of the Samain in Galicia. Sowing was historically celebrated from October 31st sunset to November 1st, marking the end of the summer season when the harvest took place and the animals were collected. On the country calendar, sowing marked the first day of winter. Crucial time of the year, a balance of herds and food supplies was made. Cattle were led to winter pastures, shelters and stables after six months on summer pastures. The hay that would feed them during the winter had to be stored away from storms. It was also the time to choose which animals would need to be sacrificed during the winter, both for food and to prepare offerings to the gods. The quality of the crops was, for the ancient inhabitants of Europe, a matter of life and death because, if they had not borne fruit, entire peoples could plunge into famine. All the harvests had to be gathered and stored properly and the valley, the oats, the wheat, the turnips and the apples had to be kept safe from the fairies and the elements. Peat and wood, for winter heating, were stacked next to the hearth in a happy time of family work and collaboration preparing supplies and preserves for the long winter to come. The ancient Celtic tribes could divide their calendar into two periods, One half plunged into darkness and the other represented by light. The Coligny calendar, which would probably be dated from the end of the 2nd century AD and is engraved on a bronze sheet, is the most important evidence for the reconstruction of an ancient Celtic calendar that appears to have divided the year into two halves. The first would begin with the month Simonius or summer time that could be related to the word Sowin and the second with the month Gemonius relating to winter. It is one of the four Gaelic seasonal festivals along with Himmel, Beltane and Lachnesad. Sowing was the forerunner of our modern Halloween and was the celebration of the entry into the dark half of the year with the festival of sowing and harvesting. For the ancient Celtic and Druidic tribes, the doors to the afterlife opened one night of the year in sowing. The passage from one era to another was a decisive moment where the layer that separates the earthly world from the spiritual one became permeable. The spirits not only of the dead, but of the past, or of other realities could in some way roam our reality and humans could also roam and lose themselves in the other world. Stories persist of people who, in sowing's night, were trapped in that beyond, while the dead appeared among the living. The reality is the little we can know today about all the details of sowing. Characteristics of the celebration in ancient times Many of this information has survived to this day thanks to the conservation work carried out by the Roman chroniclers during the invasions. We can extract from some legends and writings that the celebration of sowing was carried out with fire as the backbone. Large bonfires were lit and around them dances were performed, representing stories or also the wheel of life, with its cycles of birth and death. They would also light spruce and grass torches that they would carry to their homes, going around the village with this fire that would surely have a purification mission and would serve to scare away evil spirits. As in Beltane, there were rituals that involved fire. 
During both festivities, it was easier to cross the border between both worlds as those known as AOC, the spirits, fairies or nature gods, could more easily enter our world. To ensure their survival and lack of the livestock, the villagers left food and drink offerings for them. To this belief, we must add that of the return of the soul of the ancestors to whom it was also necessary to provide hospitality. Divination rituals were also common, and it was even believed that offspring born at that time would possess the gift of divination. Customs and masks were common in the areas of Wales, Scotland, Ireland and men, and records of these have been preserved from at least the 16th century. This tradition consisted of dressing or disguising oneself with cloth, a makeup made of ashes in the face, masks made with animal skulls and other stuff. People thus dressed went from house to house singing songs and they then received food offerings. The purpose could be to imitate the AOC or perhaps the souls of the deceased to receive the offerings for them. This give and take when offering fruit to the masked people could symbolize watching over the good fortune of the year. One of the functional elements within the folkloric tradition of sowing would be the use of lanterns made by carving turnips and other vegetables to which they would make grotesque faces and where they would place a light with the magical purpose of representing spirits of supernatural beings to protect themselves from them. These lantern turnips would be carried by the people in custom and also placed on window sills and lighting the pathways. Festive Syncretism – The Evolution from Sewing to Halloween Sewing began to receive new influences that would transform this holiday. Already in the first half of the first century AD, the Romans had conquered most of the Celtic territory and in the course of the 400 years that they ruled there, two festivals of Roman origin were combined with the traditional Celtic celebration of sowing. Feralia celebrated a late October in commemoration of the passing of the dead and the feast to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruits and trees. The spread of Christianity in the Celtic lands during the 6th, 7th and 8th centuries led to a transformation of winter rituals. Although the creation of Christianity's All Saints Day dates back to the 4th century due to the large number of martyrs generated and it was in 610 that Pope Boniface IV dedicated the Roman pantheon to the Virgin and All Saints, its celebration could not be established on the 1st November until the 7th century by Pope Gregory IV. The night of October 31st could thus become All Saints' Eve. Escalers do not hesitate to affirm that the intention of establishing it on that day was to replace the Celtic festival of the dead. The celebration was also called All Hallows, coming hallow from Old Anglo-Saxon Halga or Holy or All Hallow Mass, coming from Middle English Al Hallow Mess, Al Hallow Mess, from Old English El Rahalgen Mess, literally the Mess of All Saints. The night before, the night of sowing, it began to be called All Hallows Eve and finally Halloween. On November 2nd, 998, two years into the millennium, the French Benedictine abbot of the Abbey of Cluny, Odilon, imposed the prayer of the dead. The Church of Rome would finally establish this day as the commemoration of the dead in the 16th century. An example of the assimilation of traditions is found in the practice of souling, where people of modest resources went to the home of wealthy ones to pray for the dead in exchange for food, receiving so-called soul cakes. For we are poor people, well known to you before, so give us a cake for charity's sake, and a blessing we leave at the door. Exporting the holiday The history of immigration to the United States details the earliest European settlements around 1600. From this time on, the British and the other Europeans settled mainly on the East Coast. In 1607, the first successful English colony was established in Jamestown, Virginia. Later, many tobacco plantations being established along the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia and also in Maryland. This was the beginning of the first and longest era of immigration which lasted until the American Revolution 
Revolution in 1775. Large-scale immigration resumed in the 1830s from Great Britain, Ireland, Germany and other parts of Central Europe as well as Scandinavia. Most were drawn to achieve farmland. The Europeans who emigrated to America brought with them their varied Halloween traditions, with its celebration in colonial times being much more common in Maryland and the southern colonies, mainly because Celtic immigrants settled more in these regions than in the north. As the beliefs and customs of different ethnic groups mixed, a kind of American fashion of Halloween began to emerge. Playful celebrations were held with dances and songs, celebrating the harvest, sharing stories about the deceased and remembering them. People also cast their luck and mischief was played. In the second half of the 19th century, due to the rise of the spiritist current, the United States entered an era of mysticism where metaphysical groups and clubs flourished among the American bourgeoisie. At the same time, millions of Irish were arriving fleeing the Irish potato famine of 1846. This new cultural influence merged with the existing one and traditions such as dressing in costumes and going from house to house, asking for food or money were adopted, a practice that eventually became the current tradition of trick or treat infused, as we have told before, with the souling and soul cakes of the Christian Day of the Dead. Celebration today, popularization and reasons for success. At the beginning of the century, Halloween became the most common way to celebrate the day, with games, seasonal foods and costumes. The festival gradually lost its mystical and religious nature. Halloween had become a secular festival with a clear entertainment purpose, sometimes being plagued by acts of vandalism that were gradually controlled. From the 50s, Halloween began to enter schools, civic centers, and a taste for detailed Halloween decorations took root in homes and became part of the mass consumption from the middle of the 20th century to the present day. The lantern turnips with grotesque faces would become the pumpkins, known as Jacob Lantern. The tradition of asking for food as an offering and soul cakes would give way to the current trick or treat, and the dresses and masks to scare away the dead would be transformed into the current amalgam of costumes that range from the typical Halloween gloomy characters, such as witches, vampire, lycanthropes, or other night creatures, to the superheroes of the Marvel or DC movies, passing through a myriad of other heterogeneous ideas distanced from the origin of the party. Why is this holiday so successful? The answer can be found, among other reasons, in a factor intrinsic to the human being, the fascination with death and the need to honor those who preceded us. Many cultural traditions celebrate a holiday dedicated to death. A couple of examples are the Chumben or Cambodian Ancestors Day, where they pay their respects to relatives who have lost up to seven generations ago, and the Yom Hilula, or Jewish Day of Festivity, celebrated since the death of the great Sadiq or Righteous One, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and day when the deceased are honored. Another of the great celebrations that has a lot of diffusion and recognition is the Mexican Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead in Mexico has a pre-Columbian origin. The Mexica calendar had a few days to honor the deceased and ceremonies consecrated to the goddess Mixtecathihuatl, the Lady of Death, Queen of Midland, the ninth and lost level of the underworld. Creating a Christian syncretism, the goddess would come to be venerated as Santa Muerte, the Holy Death, who would watch over the fate of souls in the afterlife, and Catholicism would move the festivities to coincide with All Souls Day and All Saints Day. The days are celebrated in Mexico with altar in which the deceased are honored offerings, parades, and the gastronomies of the festival, the bread of the dead, or the candy skulls in honor of the dead. Today, neo-pagan religions such as Wicca, Neo-Druidism, or other polytheistic forms of Celtic influence give great importance to the celebration of sowing, since November the 1st marks the new year for them. Their way of celebrating the festivity is intended to be faithful to the way it is believed that Gaelic faiths were conducted. 
This is with bonfires, decorating their altars, honoring the deceased, preparing special meals with autumn seasonal foods, etc. The weekend sowing, Sabbath, is for many the most important of the will of the year, being the spirit of the dead, ritually invited to attend and be present within the circle. As we have observed, it is inherent to human beings to celebrate at certain times of the year a festival in honor and worship of the ancestors and, in the traditions inherited from ancestral Europe, the entrance of the winter season. We will thus continue to ensure the celebration of seasonal festivities, whether in a secular form or reminiscent of their sacred past.